Happy Monday, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here, and welcome back, guys. What is going to be nothing short of another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update. I'm wishing you all a wonderful start to your week. So we're going to be doing something quite interesting in this daily market update. We're going to be leaving the news for uh, today. There hasn't been much. Obviously, it was Sunday yesterday. Market's a little bit turbulent going into Monday. I guess they've got a bit of angst in regards to how last Monday um, unfolded. Um, but what we're going to be doing in this video, because I'm noticing and feeling the fatigue in the cryptocurrency space, we're going to be focusing on the big picture. We're going to be talking about global liquidity. Now, you guys will know I did that video from my fireplace. Um, I believe it was on Saturday where we spoke about global liquidity. We spoke about a massive driver of global liquidity, of course, being central banks, what they're about to do, essentially the opposite of what we saw the BOJ do. And we saw the BOJ up their interest rates, strengthen their currency, and thus uh, the likes of the Nikkei have the worst day in history. Um, and it, the, the silver lining really in that was that really showed us the effect of the FX markets on the broader markets uh, and the effect that central banks can have on markets. We're about to see the adverse of that with the largest central bank out there, the Federal Reserve actually lowering interest rates. This should lower the Dixie, the strength of the dollar, which ultimately should see uh, risk assets doing well. And this is because, of course, central banks affect liquidity because they ultimately set the price of money. Um, so if you haven't watched that video, do go and do that. Because this is, and it was released on Saturday, it was the only video I think I released on Saturday. This is going to be a good one because what I'm actually going to be doing in this video, we're going to start things off with CoinShares report like we typically do every Monday, which looks at inflows in regards to exchange traded crypto products. And we saw inflows after a couple of negative outflows. We know that we saw institutions buying the uh, sort of TradFi markets, obviously on the back end of Monday, buying that dip. Um, we also saw uh, nearly record inflows in regards to capital flowing into Binance. So there's, there's been dip buying across the board. We, we kind of get that from CoinShares report. We'll be looking at Bitcoin in regards to the four-year cycle theory and just showing you everything's actually okay. In fact, the only kind of uh, anomaly, which I guess is a good one, is that Bitcoin put in a pre-halvening all-time high, and that's obviously based on the institutional involvement that's now here. We're looking at Bitcoin a little bit, and then we're going to be talking about global liquidity and actually the housing market. And you're going to say to me, all in, wh why the hell are you talking about housing? Um, because it is relevant to the cryptocurrency space. Because if housing is going to do well, that suggests a um, good environment in regards to global liquidity. And crypto is the highest beta in regards to being a beneficiary of global liquidity. That's my honest opinion. So that's why we're looking at housing. Because it very much signals what is going to be a good time for global liquidity, which is going to be a good time for risk assets, which, going back to Saturday's video, we looked at the dollar and the ramifications on risk assets, what the central banks are about to do. We spoke about the BOJ, the carry trade, the effects of that. And if housing is going to do well, and it's very suggestive, we're going to be looking at a number of housing charts with a longer video on US housing. Um, we, we, we can do one on UK. We're going to be looking at UK REITs. We're going to be looking at UK uh, USITs. Um, we're also going to be looking at EU housing. It's all pointing in the same direction, which is suggestive that it's a good time for global liquidity, which means that crypto is going to do well. So often, and one of the beautiful things that we do here at the channel, and I do say beautiful, is because for me, it's kind of like um, being Neo in the Matrix, I guess, in regards to understanding charts, because they very much paint a picture. And when it walks, talks and quacks like a duck, it's a duck, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get into it all. We've rambled on for three minutes now. Let's take a look at CoinShares report like we like to do every monday and this is volume 95 digital asset fund flows weekly report so coin these guys are great to follow by the way inflow rebound amid market correction ethereum leads the pack you can see not by much because we've still got a lot of heavy selling coming out of grayscale um one interesting thing i think is short bitcoin etp so products that are essentially a short bitcoin sometimes a multiple uh, saw their largest outflow since may 2023 that is a very positive sign, ladies and gentlemen, totaling 16 million, 23% of AUM, reducing AUM for short positions to the lowest level since the start of the year, indicating a substantial investor exit in regards to short Bitcoin products. People that are speculating on the price of Bitcoin going down. Is retail using these ETPs? No, it's more of an institutional grade of investors that use these because, you know, uh, retail, they can use exchanges to short Often they do it with leverage, which I think is totally stupid. Um, you know, our ethos here at All in Crypto is uh, to essentially ensure 
um, that we don't try and get people to do things that are too complex. We're not selling anybody a silver bullet. We're not selling anybody anything. We have a Patreon that we're totally honest and transparent about. And obviously, um, you guys get two weekly meetings with me and my portfolio and, and, and obviously access to the community as a result of that. Um, but what, what we're trying to do is help people understand where we're at in regards to market cycles, which we can derive from technically looking at things. We did a great Patreon meeting yesterday where we look at things across the board and make sure that people are positioned accordingly, potentially for that on a non-financial uh, advisory basis. I don't care whether people buy or sell crypto. It doesn't affect me. I don't benefit from it. All we're doing is reporting on uh, where we think the market's at and what we think is to come. And it's entirely up to you guys uh, in regards to what you guys choose to do as a result of that. Just use me as um, perhaps an opinion um, to add potentially to yours. So interestingly, also digital asset products saw inflows totaling 176 million as investors saw recent price weakness as a buying opportunity so did the tradfi markets obviously we we looked at richard tang's tweet in regards to inflows uh, and trading volume on binance actually ethereum has benefited the most from the recent market correction attracting 155 million in inflows and that was in the backdrop of grayscales i mean look at the the, the out, outflows here guys unbelievable and the inflows actually still dwarfed it and we had the same thing. The Ethereum ETF is on the exact same trajectory that the Bitcoin ETF was on when it first got listed. That led to a 90% rally for Bitcoin. I think Ethereum is going to do an even greater one. Uh, and there's obviously a lot of turbulence going on, not just in regards to the first ETH spot ETF starting to trade, the global markets, uh, and we're keeping you up to date with it here. And of course, you've seen inflows into the likes of Solana. Um, obviously, a little bit in Cardano, of course, XRP, Litecoin. Uh, and certainly the multi-assets were the biggest beneficiaries. And remember, we're much watching multi-assets to give us that kind of broad uh, scope in regards to, or, or, or be one reason that we're bullish on the space. If we're bullish on things like 21 shares is um, crypto index or Bitwise's index or Grayscale Digital Large Cap Fund, and we've got higher targets from that suggested the whole space is going to do well, just like mining stocks and everything else. So global liquidity index, uh, or sorry, Bitcoin liquidity index, liquid index sorry this is the longest chart for bitcoin that we have you can see we've got the halvenings running horizontally down the charts and you can see the sort of price action that you get around them this is the first time bitcoin ever went on to put in a new all-time high around the halvening uh, or halving or however you want to say it um, and that's because there's institutions now here and they've really pumped it retail is largely not here yet and that's why most altcoins are still in that accumulation insider buying phase ready for that public participation uh, and to really sort of um, send it in the direction we believe it's going in, which is going to be correlated to the macro, which we're going to talk about in just a second. Um, so you can see what typically happens around the halvening. Halving, you have this period of consolidation. We're very much following that playbook today, ladies and gentlemen. We've had that kind of flush out. You know, ultimately, we've got technical targets that sees Bitcoin go even higher, whether you want to use this bull flag here, uh, depending on whether you want to where you want to draw it from. Um and then, of course, we've got our inverse head and shoulders, which aligns with everything else that we're looking at. You know, this, of course, is um, uh, our, uh, total two. Also talking about ETPs, let's just quickly take a look at them. Um, where are we? Um, here we are. These are recovering nicely and ultimately going higher, which means the whole space is set in that direction. And of course, there's going to have to be a great macro picture. Bitcoin is still the tide that rises and sinks all ships, but it's very much the kind of macro picture is very much tethered to that. Um, or the macro picture is very much the tide that rises and sinks Bitcoin and, 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 and risk assets generally. And we think that you've got this amazing time ahead of you. So let's talk about that because this is the global liquidity index. It aligns with Bitcoin for your cycle theory. I know Raul, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Raul personally, um, I think he has some amazing guests on Real Vision. Um, and I do think he's actually a good source for crypto uh, and, you know, sort of general macro information. I truly do think that, you know, uh, even though I'm, you know, I have my own sort of opinion. Um, he talks about this everything code. And I think that's very true, what he's looking at. You know, it lines with PMIs. There's, when, all we do here as technical analysts is we stack probabilities in our favor and we go with the most probable outcome. And that is being long the markets right now and expecting a great upside to come. And this is the global liquidity cycles. Now we have our own chart of this, um, which I looked at yesterday for Patreons. There's lots of them. It's predicting global liquidity is going to uptick. Now we looked on Saturday, do go and watch that Saturday video because it would be a great complimentary to this one. We looked at one of the main drivers of global liquidity and it's of course central banks. And we know what central banks are going to do. We saw with the Nikkei strengthening, or sorry, the yen strengthening. Let's pull this up whilst we're talking about it, the effects that that had on the Nikkei. 
as the currency strengthened, the Nikkei dropped. And you're about to see, look how tethered these are, and you're about to see um, a larger player, obviously Japan's a massive player, third largest economy, um, essentially do the adverse of that, which should be good and sort of pump global liquidity. We know M2's rising and all these other things. And I want to talk about housing. You know, we've been bullish on the housing sector, just like we're bullish on bonds, which is also a great barometer for liquidity that's breaking out. This is a real estate sector in the US. So this is a, a spider. Um, you can see this is now breaking out. And we were looking at this bullish divergence that you had down here. This is obviously progress. This is very much what we would call phase one, accumulation, that basing, ready for that upside, which very much looks similar to global liquidity. Now, why am I showing you all this? Because you've got to ask yourself the question, well, what does crypto do in that environment? It does a lot better. Um, it's the fastest horse in what is going to be a generally uh, good race or, 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 or uh, a race for risk assets. Um, it's going to do exceptionally well, guys, and housing very much points in that. And we can correlate markets together. This is iShares uh, property. So I think this is a European property fund. So it's not just one US housing thing that looks like this. You know, this is uh, Vanguard's. You know, you can look at um, iShares US real estate. Some are a little bit uglier than others, like this one, for example. Uh, this is mortgage uh, real estate. So obviously there's a bit of debt involved in that. This is Schwab's US REITs. So this is US. This is Europe. Very much pointing in an upward direction or like it wants to go there. This is the iShares stock Europe 600 real estate iShares. Don't know if there's any other crypto channels that have ever dared to look at this. And you could be looking at technical patterns that are pointing to the upside here, which aligns with global liquidity and crypto is going to do amazing in that environment. And this, of course, is a UK um, housing um, market. Also, if, when we talk about the UK uh, markets, the FTSE is now broken out into all-time highs and it's supporting there. Why is this happening? Because they know what's to come. This is why markets are at all-time highs. Um, so it's an amazing time. I do think we have ahead of us. I really like to focus sometimes on the sort of broader macro context because I feel the fatigue. But for me, it's all about getting that bigger picture right and being positioned accordingly and, and, and sort of battle testing your portfolio. Um, certainly, if you think what's to come uh, is going to be upside, you want to have the right assets in that environment. And we constantly readjust our portfolio. If you want to unlock my portfolio, do become a patron. You'll get weekly meetings with me and, of course, access to an amazing community that I'm very proud of. Um, so that's really it from me. Don't panic. We are in good stead. Um, from a macro point of view, from a technical point of view, when you weigh up the crypto space, from a global point of view, um, yes, there's a lot of uncertainty and sort of craziness going on in the world right now. Um, but certainly for the short term, we think markets are going to do or, or, or mid to sort of mid to bridging on to longer term, you know, certainly going into 2025 uh towards 2026, we think the market's going to do very well and we think crypto is going to be the best performing asset class uh, during that time period. So we've looked at housing as a barometer for crypto. Very interesting. You know, you can suggest or you can derive that if housing is going to do well, crypto is going to do significantly better. And it's a good time overall for the markets. If you look at bonds, they're starting to pick up, um, which is suggestive of liquidity and certainly an easing from central banks coming, uh, which we've already got from Europe and the UK. UK uh, inflation coming out today a little bit harder than expected. We've got US inflation, I believe, on um, uh, Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be an interesting week, but we'll keep you up to date with it all here on the channel. So that's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this content as much as I enjoyed presenting it. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you. Have a magical Monday, guys. I'll see you all in the next one.